In this video, I'm testing two legendary brownie recipes, one from BuzzFeed Tasty and the other from Binging with Babish. These recipes have a lot of similarities, but they also have some distinct differences, which produces two very unique brownies. I'm gonna show you how to bake them and then grade them with my lemon taste tester. That's one of the better brownies I've ever had. These are far worse than those. That's a good brownie. That is an incredible good brownie. I want a glass of milk. For both recipes, begin by preheating your oven to 350 degrees and greasing a 13 by nine pan with butter and parchment paper. Butter the parchment paper before placing it in the pan. If you wait until after, it's gonna be much harder to get an even coating of butter on the paper. Tasty's official recipe on their website calls for 60 to 70% dark chocolate, but their instructional video says you can choose either milk chocolate, which can be something like 40% cacao, or an intense 80% dark chocolate. I chose a 64% bittersweet chocolate, and spoiler, these brownies were delicious, so I recommend that level of intensity. Chop eight ounces of chocolate, and then add 30 grams of Dutch processed cocoa powder and one tablespoon of espresso powder. Pour two and a half sticks of unsalted melted butter over top, and then let that sit for two minutes before whisking the mixture until it's smooth. To a large bowl, add two cups of granulated sugar, half a cup packed dark brown sugar, and two teaspoons each of vanilla extract and kosher salt. For the beginner bakers out there, kosher and table salt are two different things, so make sure you're using the right one. Using an electric mixer on high, beat six eggs for 10 minutes. Now this duration is incredibly important because there is no leavener in this recipe. So get that timer going and you get bonus points if you can put in your AirPods with one hand to better pass the time. By this point, your chocolate mixture will have cooled slightly. So you're gonna blend the two mixtures together until everything is well incorporated. Scoop and level one cup of all-purpose flour and sift that into the mixture along with one half cup Dutch processed cocoa powder and then fold. This will take a few minutes, so don't rush it or you'll knock out all the air that you added when we were whipping the eggs and sugar together. Once everything has been incorporated, spread the mixture into your prepared pan and bake at 350 for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, take the brownies out of the oven and slam them onto your countertop to ensure an even, consistent texture once fully baked. Sprinkle sea salt on top before putting it back in the oven for a further 25 minutes. Tasty says the sea salt is optional. I say it is not. This is important. Don't skip the salt, just trust me. Let the brownies cool completely on a wire rack before removing them from the tin. And now it's time to turn to Binging with Babish's recipe. In a large bowl, pour two sticks of unsalted melted butter over one and three quarter cups of granulated sugar. Add one and a half teaspoons of espresso powder, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and four eggs plus two egg yolks. Once that's fully whisked, add in one cup cocoa powder and half a cup of vegetable oil. Babish's goal is to produce a chewy brownie, so here he requires bread flour, which has more gluten than all-purpose flour and thus more chew. In his video, Babish does not say how much flour to use, but the helpful folks in the comments agree that you need one and three quarter cups here. Add in a tablespoon of baking powder and kosher salt, and then add six ounces of chopped bittersweet chocolate to your chocolate mixture before folding everything together. Once all this is incorporated, smooth the mixture into your prepared tin and bake it at 350 degrees for 35 minutes. Now that these brownies are cut and cooled, all that's left is the tasting and the grating with my live-in taste tester. Taste tester, hello. Hello. Thank you for joining. Happy to be here. How do you like brownies? Eight out of 10. I know, you're not a big brownie person, are you? Well, eight's pretty good. We have two recipes here that you and I have never tried before. Oh, there's one flake of salt on top of it. I have to say- Am I supposed to eat that flake or dodge it? You're supposed to eat it. You put the flakes on and I had them all and then when I was cutting them and moving them, a lot of the flakes fell off. Mmm. That's a good brownie. That is an incredible good brownie. I want a glass of milk. I want more salt on it. Yeah. I yeah. Maybe Like I had here. one little flake and I don't even taste it. Here you go. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna take it on a salt flake as well. Mmm. Better with the salt flake. That's one of the better brownies I've ever had. 
I completely agree. That's delicious. Chewy, fudgy. If I could change one thing, I would make the salt crystals a little smaller. I would take this salt, mm -hmm. I would put it in a mortar and pestle. Oh. I would go just once, uh -huh. and then I would sprinkle it. I bet you could achieve the same by just crushing it between your fingers. Let's move on to Babish. All right. Mm. Babish had you chop and incorporate whole pieces of chocolate, and that's where you get some of these in between your having like literal melted pieces of chocolate okay. amongst like the cake flakes. That chocolate is necessary because these are pretty dry yes. and cakey. Mm -hmm. And the chocolate is what is adding moisture. That said, these are far worse than those. I love Babish, but I agree. Sure. But these are like a little dry and mm -hmm. a little cakey. Yeah, the, the chocolate in the middle is what, what elevates them above like store-bought or something like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, way worse than the tasty one. Yeah, it's not like an overly sweet brownie. Yeah. Put it in your in your sundae. Have it with some ice cream on oh, the side. Yeah. Like, give it something else going on, and then you'll be good here. I would say if you're going to mix it with ice cream, mm. this is the better brownie. Oh, tell me about that. Because this is dry. It needs moisture. All right, let's grade them. We are using the OWL grading system from Harry Potter. The grades go from O as the top grade, O for outstanding, down to T for troll. Let's start with Babish. What would you? Where would you rate this against every other brownie that you've ever had? Acceptable. I would agree. Okay. A for acceptable, it's the last pass grade. Totally fair. I'm not gonna like turn that down at a party. Mm -hmm. Let's grade the tasty brownie. Oh. Oh for outstanding. Yeah, these are phenomenal. Top brownies. grade. Yeah. Straight to NEWT. Really good. Gets to be a wizard right away. Or. <laughs> or <Horror> brownie. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. It really helps my channel. Wait, oh, I thought you were giving a thumbs down for a second. No, no. it's thumbs up and I'm pointing to you. I'll just give thumbs up.